When you think about the most dangerous time to be alive, you probably envision when dinosaurs ruled the earth. Your chances of survival would probably be pretty slim. But what if I told you that there was another place that existed that no one, absolutely no one, would stand a chance at survival. In fact, it's not even land, but a body of water, and it was home to some of the most deadliest and terrifying creatures that have ever existed. In today's video, we're diving deep into the scariest prehistoric ocean to ever exist that could ignite fear and thalassophobia into anyone. And not even our current day great white shark could stand a chance. Yep, you heard me. And I'm talking about the Western Interior Seaway, also known as Hell's Aquarium. Geography. Surprisingly enough, you might have even walked across what was once the Western Interior Seaway as it once divided North America through Canada the United States, and Mexico during the late Cretaceous period around 100 to 66 million years ago. Many of North America's most noteworthy fossils come from the Western Interior Seaway, including the largest sea turtles ever discovered, famous fish like the X-Fish and some of the world's best-known mosasaurs. This inland seaway persisted for more than 20 million years that was over 2,000 miles long and stretched out to 600 miles wide. Due to its shallow waters, it was a warm and tropical sea. But don't be fooled by its size and welcoming temperatures. This vast and shallow seaway was filled with the most gigantic and jaw-dropping predators, where every shadow in the murky waters would be horrifying predator hiding, waiting to attack its next meal. That's why paleontologists named this deadly prehistoric sea Hell's Aquarium. Mosasaurs the most notorious carnivorous creatures of Hell's Aquarium were the Mosasaurs. Mosasaurs were giant marine lizards that were the top deadliest predators of their time. They were a force to be reckoned with. With long muscular bodies, their arms and legs had evolved into strong flippers and a long tail that was perfect for agile swimming. They attacked their prey with bursts of speed that no one would see coming. Mosasaurs had sharp teeth and with double hinged jaws and flexible skulls, very similar to snakes, which allowed them to swallow their prey whole. Certainly, no one could escape those jaws of death. In their time on Earth, Mosasaurs achieved incredible diversity. To highlight a few of the most common Mosasaurs, the Cladastes was the smallest type of Mosasaur and had sharp pointed and curved teeth with short necks yet slender bodies and grew up to be 10 to 15 feet or 3 to 4 and a half meters long, as long as an average car. While the Platycarpus was a mid-sized mosasaur that had sharp serrated teeth and was the most abundant species, it swam in the water with ease, similar to a snake, and grew up to be 24 feet or 7 meters long. Lucky for us, it was a picky eater as its diet mainly consisted of small fish and squid. Last, but certainly not least, the deadliest mosasaur by far was the Tylosaurus. The largest ever recorded specimen was a whopping 50 feet or 15 meters long and weighing in at about 17 tons, making it the biggest marine reptile to ever exist. It was about the size of a humpback whale and it was one of the largest carnivores the world has ever seen. It had two rows of pointy, cone-shaped, thick serrated teeth that were great for tearing flesh. Each tooth was over a foot long. Yikes! The Tylosaurus was an excellent hunter, as it used its snout to locate prey. Its diet consisted of fish, sharks, plesiosaurs, and even other mosasaurs of its own kind. That's right, it was a cannibal. If you thought one Tylosaurus was bad enough, evidence has shown that they used to travel in groups of 20 and ate virtually anything in its path. Imagine seeing these ferocious predators bigger than the size of a yacht coming straight toward you. I'd say your chances of survival would be pretty slim. Dinosuchus even though the mosasaurs were terrifying predators, oddly enough, they did not have the deadliest jaw. The strongest bite goes to the infamous Dinosuchus, which its name translated to terrible crocodile, yet it was far larger than any modern-day crocodile. It had thick and heavy armor covered in osteoderms, which was big, round, bony plates providing plenty of protection. They were huge predators as they grew up to 39 feet long with snapping jaws 
and had a bite even stronger than a Tyrannosaurus Rex. The Dinosuchus could make any predator a potential meal. Even though they were not as big as the Mosasaurs, the Dinosuchus weighed around 8.5 tons, around as much as an African elephant. When it came to diet, the Dinosuchus ate anything it could catch, like marine turtles, fish, and even dinosaurs if they were unfortunate enough to get close to the water. Frightening Sharks of the Seaway Another predator home to Hell's Aquarium was a terrifying giant shark named Sertoxarina, also known as the Ginsu shark. Believe it or not, it was 26 feet or almost 6 meters in length and weighing over 5 tons. It resembled a current day great white shark and had similar lifestyles even though they were not closely related. It was a very fast swimmer, as it could reach speeds of up to 43 miles per hour. It had razor-sharp teeth that made cutting through flesh easy and had an even stronger jaw than a modern-day great white. A fearsome shark worth noting was the Squalicorax, also known as the Crow Shark. This shark was smaller than the Ginsu Shark, but don't let its smaller size trick you. It was ferocious as its teeth were curved, small, and serrated, perfect for slicing through tough tissue. In fact, its favorite meal was the pterosaurs, which were flying reptiles of the time. Now, the shell-crushing shark, also known as the Tychotis, was enormous, reaching up to 33 feet in length. It was well known for its teeth, as they were more well-rounded rather than being a pointed triangular shape. The ridges increased the bite pressure in order to crush and eat shellfish like crustaceans and marine turtles. The ridges gave a folded appearance to the teeth. The Tychotis was more of a benthic predator, hovering around the bottom of the ocean floor rather than other shark species that roamed the open ocean. Monster Hunters A real monster hunter that deserves praise was the Xyphactinus, also known as the X-Fish. It was a frighteningly fast creature, reaching up to speeds of 37 miles per hour, lurking in mysterious parts of the ocean, often appearing in groups and swiftly attacking its prey. It had a slender, torpedo-like body, ranging 15 to 20 feet in length, and was one of the largest bony fish to have ever lived. They had terrifying jaws and would feed on whatever it could get its teeth on. Its prey would include smaller fish, turtles, and even smaller mosasaurs. Numerous skeletons of the X-Fish have been found with undigested prey in their stomach, indicating they swallowed their prey whole. Yikes! Talk about an awful way to go. Let's not forget to mention the Archelon, which was the largest marine turtle to ever exist. It was about 15 feet in length, and with the largest specimen weighing in at about 3 tons, its size and weight would have been an incredible sight to see. The Archelon was an obligate carnivore, meaning its diet was more than 70% meat and the other 30% was from non-animal food sources. This terrific turtle, like today's leatherback turtle, had a hooked beak and its jaws were great at crushing hardshell crustaceans as well as preying on jellyfish and cephalopods like octopuses and squid. The anatomy of this turtle, with weaker arms, indicates that it probably spent a lot of time on the soft, muddy seafloor, similar to a slow-moving bottom feeder rather than the open ocean since it was not a fast swimmer. It preferred swimming in shallower and calmer water. However, it still could have been a good swimmer overall that was capable of open ocean travel. The Archelon lived amongst the other sea creatures of Hell's Aquarium and was certainly not the deadliest animal in these shallow seas. If these waters weren't scary enough, don't forget about the skies. The open air was home to the most famous pterosaur, known as the pterodon, which was the largest flying animal known until the late 20th century. They had wingspans up to 18 feet, which allowed them to soar along the ocean's surface, minimally flapping their wings. Unlike the earlier pterosaurs, pterodons had toothless beaks that were long and slender and very sharp. Luckily for us, their diet mainly consisted of fish by dipping their beaks into the water and even dove for their food. Let's hope the pterodon doesn't mistake you for a fish. Cephalopods 
Highly intelligent and impressive predators were the cephalopods, similar to the modern-day squids and octopuses. Specifically, the Tusatuthis lived during the same time in the Cretaceous period in the western interior seaway. It was equal to length of a modern-day squid, even though it's more closely related to the octopus. Although the Tusatuthis did not look as intimidating as a mosasaur, it was an active predator as it preyed on a variety of fish. Studies of fossils suggest that the prey would be swallowed tail first, with their head or tentacles outside of the mouth, blocking their gills, suffocating its prey. Another cephalopod was the Encotuthis, closely related to the Tusiotuthis, also known as the spear squid, and it grew up to 6.7 feet in length. The Parapuzosia, on the other hand, was different than the Tusiotuthis and Encotuthis, as it was the largest known species of ammonite, measuring up to 8 to 11 feet long. Ammonites were known to be open water predators. Their diet consisted of fish, other cephalopods, and possibly even smaller marine reptiles if their tentacles could catch them. The Parapuzosia had a hard outer shell that could use a jet stream of water to propel itself. It also had a very strong and tough beak that could slice through flesh and even crush bones of other crustaceans. Even though the Parapuzia might have been impressive predators themselves, they were not on the top of the food chain as they were preyed upon by sharks like the Cretoxorin and other mosasaurs. Megalodon Shark Even though we've reached the end of the most terrifying creatures that existed in Hell's Aquarium, one predator that still deserves such prey is the infamous Megalodon Shark, which lived approximately 23 to 3.6 million years ago from the early Miocene to the Paleocene epochs. Imagine a current-day great white shark, but even bigger and deadlier. In fact, it was at least three times the size of a great white and was 30 times heavier, making it the biggest shark to ever exist. Scientists are still uncovering the mysteries of this incredible shark. It's been estimated that they've grown up to 60 feet long or over 18 meters. It was about the size of today's modern-day fin whale. Contrary to a great white, the megalodon shark had a more compact jaw, shorter nose, and and longer fins. You might wonder how the Megalodon got its name. Well, it actually means large tooth. And they weren't kidding, since their teeth grew up to about 7 inches long. It made a great white shark's teeth look like a baby shark. With all those teeth together, scientists believe that would be the most powerful bite in the world, calculating at around 40,000 pounds per square inch over three times as strong as a T-Rex's bite. With such a strong bite, the Megalodon could easily crush a car. Its jaws could also open so wide that it could swallow two adult humans standing side by side. Yikes! Its diet was rather diverse as it mainly consisted of whales, seals, sea turtles, and other sharks. It lived in warmer waters of the ocean, but fossil evidence of the megalodon shark have been found all over the world. Paleontologists also estimate that this enormous shark had a crazy appetite, eating as much as 2,500 pounds or 1,100 kilograms a day. Talk about a lot of food to keep this shark alive. What happened to Hell's Aquarium? You might be relieved to know that none of these frightening creatures exist in today's world. And you might even wonder what happened to Hell's Aquarium. Some creatures had a slower decline, while others continued to go through different stages of evolution. During the latest stage of the Cretaceous period, around 70 million years ago, the western interior seaway slowly disappeared as the two land masses, Laramidia and Appalachia, began to reconnect. As the sea levels decreased, the continent uplifted. In its place, it left the incredible fossils of various kinds of species that lived within the western interior seaway. Traces of the fossil records are located in marine deposits throughout the United States, starting from New Mexico to North Dakota. Some of the most noteworthy ones are the Pierre Shale and the Austin Chalk. Thanks for diving into this terrifying prehistoric ocean with us. What surprised you the most learning about Hell's Aquarium? Tell us in the comments below. If you'd like to hear about a specific topic on our channel, please let us know. Paleoverse aims to provide the most interesting topics regarding dinosaurs, paleontology, and more. Thank you to all of our amazing viewers and special shout out to our subscribers. If you're new to this channel and if you enjoyed learning about these terrifying sea monsters that made up Hell's Aquarium, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content.